Hello and welcome to one of the little bit different videos that I usually make for PoE. So in this one, I'm going to show you a few of the strategies I use to earn currency. Keep in mind, this is not the best currency strategy ever or anything. So that's a little disclaimer for you. These are just the strategies I use basically every league to earn myself a little bit extra currency once I start farming sufficiently in red maps and once i can invest some money to churn around so there will be a few of these strategies i will have the notepad linked in the description below link to my discord server for the notepad and we are going to go with some simple strategies here i generally start with we can go like this i generally start with shaper guardians so these ones you can pretty much buy whenever you'd like so shaper guardians not elder but shaper specifically shaper guardians that you can buy on tft or regular maps and and such and you can make um, make some nifty nifty currency out of it you can always use orb of horizons to change the to change them into whatever else they are so they can be changed into any of the four but this is the atlas tree that will be used for the shaper this is a base atlas tree these are all going to be linked in the notepad so you will have to access my discord in in turn to to get to to there and this is basically Shaper with Maven. So you are going to do Shaper Guardians, Mavened up, with bosses have additional chance to, to drop stuff, with additional pack, invasive adversaries, scarabs, and then you can choose any of the mechanic that you personally like. So what is mandatory? The Atlas, the base Atlas is mandatory. That is 66 points is basically mandatory. You will get that by the time you reach red maps. Now for the Scarabs, I would use Incursion Scarab of Invasion, three of them for extra monster packs. So they are, I always use like cheap Scarabs. So they are um, here, all three of them. So you can have additional like 36 to 48 uh, monster packs so that's perfectly fine you want more monsters influencing scarab of the hordes and in that gives influence ma monster pack size and scarab of hunted traitors which gives you extra monsters in the map basically tldr is more monsters more potential loot like maps scarabs and such on the map device you want to do either domination or any mechanic you want extra of domination when you take the drone to power which is the notable notable here or yeah notable so shrines in your maps have 50 percent chance to be guarded by additional pack of monsters and they're guarded by at least one magic pack gives you even more monsters if you want any other mechanics you can use so so the overview would be maven on map device rotation of guardians you do all four of them once you do all four of guardians mavened up once you do all of that, you are going to do Maven's Invitation, The Formed. That will pop on Kirak on the right side here, Invitation, The Formed. You can roll it however you'd like. You can scour it, doesn't matter. You go in and you basically do it. So you do regex and go, technically. Now, what does that give when you do every time you do the Invitation for... Um, Shaper Guardians, I've never dropped less, I've always dropped more, so you drop at least four of Crescent Splinters. If you do the full the full round, depending on the uh, depending on the league, you, are, you can get up to a Divine and such, but you always get four. Sometimes I get five, very rarely I get six, depending on how you roll these maps, but the point is just to churn them right you can get awakened gems you can get more more maps more fragments and such now good things to add that are quick you can also of course interchange scarabs as needed june with intelligence gathering and obsessed with vengeance those are basically intelligence gathering is to get 10 intelligence to to random um, safe house and obsessed with vengeance to get extra 40 percent june 
chance. Now Katarina drops a Veiled Orb, the later in the league, the more expensive the Veiled Orb. It has a low chance, but 1 in 6 should technically in um, red maps drop you a Veiled Orb. Should. It's a chance. Strong boxes are always good, and uh, you can do scarabs, hidden compartments, and potency. Those are also cheap scarabs. Don't use any other scarabs. It's not needed. Absolutely just use the cheapest ones. Just extra strong boxes and extra like mods for strong boxes. Essences are always good. Plus scarabs, if you can handle the essences, you can do regular ascent or stability essences. The only one that I do not recommend is not I do not recommend picking up crystal resonance. Because because using Remnants of Corruption replaces all essences with one of the essences on the Imprisoned. If you want to do that route, good luck. This also gives uh, bosses an essence modifier. It's going to make bosses pretty, pretty difficult. Any Delirium Orb can be applied up to five, but just one would be, would be sufficient. Those are a few chaos. They give uh, extra monsters. Harbingers, but no Scarabs, because Scarabs are always too expensive for Harbingers, but that gives you Harbinger points. They basically just give you an extra, extra Harbinger, or maybe two. And Heist League Dependent, where the most important node is no Honor Among Thieves, where um, you can get like more caches and then casing the joint, which gives you blueprints and they can be revealed. If you get these blueprints that are fully revealed and such, they can go for a pretty penny. So those are the most important nodes. Now, good mechanics, but they extend map time. Blight, all passes but Cassius Pride and no Scarabs. Ultimatum, which also brings us to like map lengthening time. Harvest. It extends map time, not too much, but it does. And Alva with all passes and no scarabs. You would just ignore the Val Oligarchs if you don't want to, but that drops currency too. Now, mechanics I do not recommend in these maps. Legion, Breach, Delirium with passives, not Delirium Orb, Beyond and Abyss. Now, the reason why is Legion and Breach lose monsters the closer the map is or the, clo the more close the map is because they spawn monsters in, a, in like a burst, like they have a location on the map. If there's no location, they will spawn less monsters. Legion does not lose all the rewards, but it loses plenty, while Breach outright loses monsters. I've tested it out. Breach outright loses a lot of monsters, so I wouldn't do these. Delirium for pass is really not worth doing. Um, beyond add some monsters, but it's like, eh, you need to overjuice a map, not worth it. And Abyss is generally very league dependent and mostly garbage to do. You can do Abyss, but you're basically depending on getting good uniques and, and stuff. So it's, it's just uh, not worth doing for the time investment. By the time you finish those two, three, four Abysses in a map, you might as well just do another, another Guardian. One negative is you have to buy Shaper Guardian maps. You can buy any, because you can use Orb of Horizon, as I've shown before, to change the maps from one Guardian to another. So if you buy like Shaper Guardians that are a little bit cheaper, some usually are, I think Phoenix is usually cheaper, you buy loads of Phoenixes, you buy some Orbs of Horizon and do -do 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 -do, play around. And once you do, I always do it in um, rounds of 20, or 10 to 20 uh, full like rotations, you always get extra Shaper maps, so you are never going to lose money. So why is this one good? You get Fragments from Bosses and Invitations, Maven Splinters, From Time to Time Awakened Gems, T17 maps, Scarabs, and so on. The investment is 0.3 Divines for one set of maps, usually that price on TFT. Average payout, 0.2 Divines for one set of Fragments, again on TFT. And you get 4 Crescent Splinters, which are around 12c each, depending on on such, but you will always offset the price and at least one one additional guardian map fragments from invitation. You always will get currency with this strategy. You have to invest minimum of let's say let's say one divine to invest to buy like three or four um, rotations of of these maps. If you want to buy them individually, they may be cheaper. If you want to farm them, they they all have their own uh, certain things. But no matter what you do with these maps, even if you run them scoured, you cannot lose money. Because the money comes straight from fragments and splinters. Anything extra 
is what is a bonus. So the scarabs are one chaos each. If you do five scarabs, you invest five chaos in a map and just rolling currency, you are definitely getting more than five chaos per map in bubblegum currency or anything else, even raw chaos orbs. So whatever you do here, you cannot lose um, currency at all. You will always get more than you bargained for. Also, you can drop um, orbs of conflict. Those are also pricey, so you can drop, drop them and you're just going to earn a decent chunk of currency. I cannot give you a currency per hour basis because I play on a relaxed pace, but um, investing five to 10 divines uh, out of this will definitely give you two to three X the investment, depending on how lucky you are, but you are always going to get more because whatever you invest, if you invest zero three for a set, let's say 04 with scarabs, 04 for a set, you are getting 02 from that, and splinters, you are already at zero and everything else that you get. So that's one of the strategies I always use. You can always see me do, do this on stream at least once, once a league. So that's the strategy number one, Shaper Guardians and Maven. Strategy number two is going to be broken down into 2A and 2B. This strategy can be done by two people, running one running A, one running B, or it can be done by one individual. However, you do need to have pretty good AoE to do the B part. This strategy is Legion and Breach. What you do first, you make an Atlas for Legion and you make an Atlas for Breach. They are, the atlases are basically different just in Legion and Breach nodes, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Let me show you the atlases. So this is the Legion atlas where you pick up Legion points. You need like 120, you can do 110 points. You do Searing Exarch, mandatory as a thing. You can do Eater of Worlds if you want like more, more stuff. I prefer doing Searing Exarch because more bubblegum currency and less like um, dangerous modifiers. And you can also use Abarath to to ignore most Searing Exarch uh, mods, but Shrines are a mandatory thing because Shrines are going to add more monsters and they're going to help you clear the maps faster, but you're basically picking up all the Legion nodes. You want to also pick up June because June is great for, again, intelligence gathering and such. You're picking up Scarabs because you are going to have loads of monsters, unique monsters from June. You're going to have regular rare monsters from everywhere else. So it is a very, very good and lucrative method of doing things. However, the initial strategy is almost all Legion nodes, Scarabs, four regular Legion Scarab and one Scarab of Officers. Don't make a mistake of going like big Scarabs, expensive Scarabs, blah, blah, blah. The cheaper you, the less you invest, the cheaper you go, the more you're going to get out of it over time. We are playing the bubblegum game. We have Faustus now. We can trade these currency with just a click. What you want to do is you want to give yourself as many monoliths as you possibly can, and then you want to do Scarab of Officers for extra rewards. These are one chaos Scarabs, and you want to do Map Device. Legion as well. Shrines add extra buff, damage speed, searing exert, bubblegum currency, and invitations. And you only need to do open maps. Now, dunes, jungle valley, ashen wood, whatever you find that's open is going to work phenomenally well, especially if you have good AoE and decent single target. The only nodes that I do not recommend are these three, which are General. Generals waste time for eight splinters with possible chance to turn into an emblem. It's a waste of time. If you encounter Vox, that's like 20 extra seconds if he decides to, to do his uh, immunity stuff. So that would be a complete waste of time if you ask me. But otherwise that's fine. June and Katarina for Veiled Orb, same thing. Regex and Go, Delirium Orb optional, regular chisels, always good. Goal, cleaning monsters for rewards, picking up splinters, incubators, emblems, and bubblegum currency. Saving or selling incubators and emblems. So I have here a lot of these um, 
emblems that you can sell later on, and I also have a lot of incubators that I have personally farmed, especially on my sweep build. And saved incubators are always applied, but best used with breach. So what you want to do is you always want to apply incubators. No matter how, how many maps you do or what maps you do, you always want to have them applied. Keep in mind, they do not work on off-weapon slot. You need to have an active gear set in order for it to accumulate monsters. So don't make a mistake of putting them in the secondary slot. Profit. Incubators give most profits if used or sold. You can either use the cheapest ones and sell the more expensive ones. You can bulk sell them, whatever. You can use all of them perfectly fine. Whichever way, those give you the most out of them. Emblems in five-way rotations always sell. Those are generally always selling. Bubblegum currency from map and searing exarch and in searing exarch invitations, they always sell if you do them in bulk too. So I have them, them here. They will always, always sell. Now, when it comes what good is with this strategy, emblems will always sell. Incubators can be used. Maps feel even better with a headhunter. So if you have a headhunter or inspired learning, maps feel mwah. One of the better ways to earn currency every league, this is League Agnostic, it is one of the better ways to, to earn currency. Whenever you can do it, you, you should, if you want to, of course. And decent experience, even though less monsters. Around 2,500 monsters, if I'm not mistaken, was what I averaged with uh, all the Legion stuff. There are bad things, however. Looting after map is done can take a chunk of time. Lots of splinters, lots of bubblegum currency. Loot filter, extremely useful to remove bad, uh, bad incubators like talismans, talismans or um, abyss jewels and such, whichever ones you don't like or low level ones. And bulk selling is unfortunately a must. You can do it through Faustus or you can do it through TFT, but bulk selling unfortunately is a must. The second part of this um, method is to be is breach now breach is a lot more interesting to me at least than legion and breach atlas looks like this it is very similar to the legion atlas the only difference is instead of legion nodes you are doing breach nodes you are not picking a few breach nodes and i will explain that now why you don't take breaches and maps open and close faster and here open and close slower and faster because in general you're always going to have at least one to two breaches open and unless you are playing a build that can annihilate three screens away these nodes won't make any difference it just means you're going to have more monsters in less of a time in general you're going to have a similar amount of monsters you're just going to spend a little bit less time i prefer more lenient route where the monster spawning is at a medium pace, a normal pace, and then you can just go back and forth. But other than that, everything is fine. There's one caveat, though. You can have a chance of having up to 10 additional breaches, so don't be surprised when suddenly you have 20 breaches in a map. It can happen. It can happen. But that's basically it. Now... When it comes to the strategy, almost all breach nodes, other than the ones I've explained, scarabs, regular four breach scarabs and one breach scarab of lordship. That gives you a breach lord every breach. Breach lords are great because with the passives on the tree, they have a chance of dropping a regular breach stone or a flawless breach stone. If they drop a flawless, good job, you got money. Similar to Legion Atlas, Shrine, Scarabs, June, Searing, Exarch, same thing. Map device, additional breaches. Regex and Go, Delirium, more optional, and such. Now, one thing that is basically mandatory, those are incubators. Because you get an average of 6k plus monster monsters a map. I've lowered this. I got 6,500 on average. I've never dropped below 6k running beach maps. Yeah, running beach maps. I've never dropped under 6k. But I'm saying around 6k for, for a build that can clean. That's one of my builds. This is like burning, burning arrow. This one can clean. Like I've farmed uh, Legion and Breach with this build. I will link the guide to this build down below. I will probably play it in uh, next leagues and such. 
But get as many monsters as you possibly can is the basically goal. Incubators mandatory and walking over breach hands plus breach lords can drop flawless breach stones. When you sometimes walk over breach, uh, breach hand, when it opens, it can open a breach lord. Good. We want more breach lords because that's where the money is at. Also, breach lords can drop scarabs because they count as unique monsters and the passive points double dipping. Profit. Loads of monsters equals loads of bubblegum currency. Absolutely. You can drop divines. You can drop whatever. Bridgestones always sell in bulk. Absolutely. To have them here. Like I, I have a metric crap ton of them. You can do them. You can sell them in bulk. You can sell the rotations. If you do Chayula rotations, you will always earn currency if you can if you can kill Chayula. Absolutely phenomenal way of earning of earning currency. But we'll get to the bad things. Chayula rotations will always give profit. Searing Exarch always sell. Good. Incubators get emptied extremely fast. 6k monsters plus a map. Maps feel extremely fun to run. They are very, very active. And experience goes through the roof. All the way to 100. Experience is insane. However, there are bad things. Metric ton of splinters to collect, which adds to map time. On average, with 13 to 15 breaches a map, it took me around 10 to 12 minutes to finish the map and loot it all. I'm not a fast gamer when it comes to when it comes to it, but around 10 minutes a map, that means 6 maps an hour. So there's that. Needs an AoE build that explodes enemies off screen too, which is very important, like ignite spread, like shock, like chain, whatever. Archers work the best, however, if you have any other spells that can just poof, annihilate screens, perfect as well too. So that those are the bad things. But conclusion for both Legion and Breach. You will never lose money on these maps. Absolutely never. Don't run them in 17s, by the way. It's better to have an AoE explodey build, of course, that can handle both. Now, you can either run Breach or Legion. Whichever one you want, sometimes I run only Breach, sometimes I run only Legion. However, if you do both, you are double dipping, you can do the same maps. Well, you should do the same maps. So if you want to do, you want to do, again, um, you can you can do Dunes, you can do Jungle Valley, you can do Beach, those are good. I do not recommend Strand anymore, because Strand loses monsters as well if it, if it gets like to a narrower corridor. So you want an open map for both of these strategies. Bonus is, if you do it in a two-man group, one does Legion, one does Breach, and the currency just flies. That's the thing. However, profit, the actual profit, what are we earning from these? You are always going to get enough of even Chayula's. Like, that's an important thing. You're going to get enough of Chayulas because you're going to pick up uh, Tortured Dreams for Chayula. You're always going to get enough Chayulas to pay for everything else. And with all the bubblegum currency that's going to, to drop, you are always gaining currency, even though we've invested, what, five Chaos for four Scarabs or, or six? Five, I think five or six Scarabs. And then you do the, the 6 Chaos on the map device. So let's say 10 Chaos investment, 10, 10 to 12 Chaos investment, and you are getting way more than, than that, similar to Legion. Now, strategy three. This one I've intentionally put here because this is... I'm a lazy person. I want to, to spend 15 to 20 minutes a map I don't care about anything. I want to earn currency. How do I earn currency? Welcome to Resident Sleeper. Alva, Ritual, Harvest, Blight, Searing Exarch, and Shaper influence in a map. Now, these maps last for days. Atlas is here. Atlas uses all the passive points that are available. You can add them if you want. You can remove them if you want. You can add, remove, whatever, whatever you'd like. This is going to be the one map lasts forever type of atlas. Now, why did I decide to include this one? This is just to prove a point that no matter what the hell you're doing in Path of Exile, in regards to currency generation, you can earn currency as long as you play the game. I know, novel concept. 
But strategy for this one, Alva experience in making temples to sell, double corrupt for items um, for items and gems, basically locus of corruption and Orianis. Ritual in Glacier map, I'll explain that in a second, for as much tribute and chance for great loot, harvest for extra juice, blight for blighted maps. Scarabs, harvest scarab because we do not have harvest uh, percentage on the, on the tree. I've ignored those points in uh, return for one Scarab. Ritual Scarab of Selectiveness, two of them, so you can reroll more favors. Influencing Scarab of the Shaper, so you get more um, loot with more monsters and the chance of shaped loot. If you get some Shaper uniques, those can drop for pretty, those can be a pretty, pretty expensive endeavor, but that's a very, very small chance, but they can happen. And whatever fifth scarab you like, I prefer like hunting traitors to, to get like extra monsters as well. Glacier map is best for ritual. The reason why is this: Glacier map drops the goats that you're you're going to get to the end boss and like oh, pardon on in the end boss arena and then the big boss big boss drops down. Those goats. If the ritual is on the boss, all count as unique monsters which give more tribute. What you do for ritual, you clean the entirety of the map, you go from boss to the beginning of the map doing rituals, because you want boss to be in the ritual for extra tribute. Once you get a lot of tribute, you can get a lot of things as well. So that's going to give you juicy, juicy tribute. If there's no glacier, any map that has multiple bosses is uh, great. So there are maps that have like uh, three bosses and if you can duplicate them, that's like six. So that's phenomenal. So any map that has multiple bosses is great for ritual, but glacier is the best one for all the goats. Like I think it's like total of nine or 12. Searing Exarch influence for bubblegum currency, of course. Goal, we live in maps. Pick up your tents. We are tenting. You get all the temples, ritual items, extra harvest used blight maps, and extra shaper influence items. Profit. The investment is very small. It's like five chaos per map. That's basically it. You can do anything on map device that whatever you like, doesn't matter. So let's say 10 chaos a map. 5 to 10 chaos a map. What are you getting getting out of it? You're getting more than 10 chaos from each map even if you do even if you do like half of these half of these mechanics. Why? Because harvest always brings juice, blight always brings maps and such. Alva temples, so that's three maps for Alva temple. If you hit corrupt, those can go for a divine and a half plus or more. If you hit Doriani, those go for like 0, 3 to 0, 5 divine, depending on the league. Maybe sometimes they go up to 1 divine, but you are sacrificing 3 maps to get like 50 chaos, maybe 70 chaos plus, so you're always profiting from Alva herself. Blighted maps always bulk sell, but I do recommend doing them, and I recommend selling blighted ravaged maps. Those are way more expensive. Harvest yellow juice always goes well. It goes insanely well later down in the in the league because people gamble. And ritual can bring in loads of bubblegum currency and divines. Plus, it can also bring like um, um, the king and the king invitation and mirrors as well as well as mirror shards. Searing exarch invitations always go as a nice bonus. Good if you like camping. Well done. You're going to spend days in maps. Experience is good, loads of bubblegum currency, bad if you hate camping, this is not the strategy for you, and time invested in the map is atrociously long. Like, those are, they, these are, like, easily 15-minute maps. Absolutely easily 15-minute maps, but you're gaining, gaining a lot of currency. These are made for relaxed pace. Now, conclusion is just to prove that any strategy you do will give you currency back and nothing else to add. Now, notable mentions are any mechanic that you want to do is going to work. Ultimatum with bribery scarabs. Um, beyond delirium, delirium orb, beyond delirium without delirium orb even, with all the other monster modifiers and uh, increase the effect of explicit, that's also going to work. Rogue exiles, tormented spirits in a specific way, Yes, but I've shown you three of the general mechanics I use every league to earn 
a bit of currency. Now, once I level up in the beginning of the league, I always start with the bottom one with Alva number one, Harvest number two, and then I do Searing Exarch. I sometimes do Ritual, I sometimes do Blight, depending on if my build can handle it, but I always do Alva and Harvest in the beginning of the league. Why? Because you can, you can sell Alva stuff later or do it for sick experience or sell sell temples or do regular temples whatever and i always do harvest to get extra um, life force so you can additionally craft some things and searing exert for bubblegum currency now the um, things that i do not recommend for beginners are basically einhar Nico, even though Nico is great for experience, but Nico is iffy. You need to know what you're doing to earn currency from Nico. Abyss, because it's atrocious. I do not recommend, even though I've mentioned it, I do not recommend the essences, as essences can be a little bit tricky to do for, for newer players. And uh, like Tormented Spirits and um, Rogue Exiles. Those are iffy in terms of how to do their... Uh, their content. Now, very, very important thing, I like Searing Exarch versus Eater of Worlds. Both are good, depending on what you like. Searing Exarch monsters I find easier. You do need Chaos Res, a little bit of Chaos Res for them, and Soul of Abarath un annihilates like 90% of the mods. That's perfectly fine. But that's the gist of it for the currency and everything that I do. I will put the uh, this notepad in the description. It's going to be in the Discord, in, in my own Discord, so feel free to join and find that one. One thing I would really like, if you've gotten to this part of the video, first things first, thank you, seriously. Next thing is, I would really like for you, if you do not mind, type in, in the comments, in the comment section, how much have you invested in these strategies and how much have you received from these strategies? As an example, if you do Shaper Guardian maps and invitations, how much have you invested and how much have you gotten out from them? Don't do the timed thingy because like divines per hour and stuff does not work really well for everyone because some people clear maps faster, some clear slower. I just want to do like per like rotation basis. How much have you have you earned? For me personally, I've invested half a divine per rotation and I've gotten more than a divine and a half per four of Shaper Guardian maps and invitations on average because those uh, silly orbs of um, conflict, they drop like mad. They drop like hotcakes. So that can also that can also help and maven chisels of course too but other than that thank you so much for watching this uh, lengthy video i hope this has helped you decide what you want to do with currency and currency generation this is also very beginner friendly so if you've liked the video please do give it a like please do sub as well we're pushing on to 1802k hopefully hopefully soon so thank you so much for the support and once again, thank you for everything so far, and I will see you in the next POE stream or video. So have a good one.